So a new protocol for skin rejuvenation in skin of color and photo damaged skin. Hi, I'm Dr. Cheryl Burgess, board certified dermatologist in Washington, D.C. I'm the medical director for the Center for Dermatology and Dermatologic Surgery. So the cosmetic concerns with aging facial skin. First of all, to review the uh, anatomy of the skin, the epidermis is where we can see pigment, tone, texture changes, even scars, and some patients complain of enlarged pores. And at the dermal level, we are using systems for hair removal, for redness, to minimize uh, blood vessels, skin rejuvenation and tightening, acne, and additional pigment in which we refer to as dermal pigment. And then you have your subcutaneous level. So the current climate of skin rejuvenation and skin of color, and we know that 80% of the world is of skin of color. And skin of color patients account for 30% of all U.S. cosmetic procedures. Therefore, the demand has increased in cosmetic procedures over time, even more it, uh, for even tone reduction of signs of aging and skin laxity. So one in three skin of color patients are demanding cosmetic treatment. Advancements in technology and skin care allow safer, more effective treatments and have helped drive the demand and availability of skin of color patients. Demand for cosmetic procedures for this segment is expected to soar in the next decade. There are special considerations for skin of color and it's understanding the unique characteristics of skin of color is very essential. The skin rejuvenation provides challenges, especially when skin resurfacing, as skin is particularly vulnerable to any significant trauma resulting in what we know is post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and where there's epidermal melanin, increased number of pigment uh, cells, um, which the organ is called melanosome, so the amount of pigment cells in each individual is the same, however, the size and the number of the melanosomes differ. The healing can be exaggerated with skin fibroblasts, therefore there is sometimes an increased risk of scarring that we have to keep in mind. So treatment options used must comply with these safety needs. Past treatments for skin of color, certain light-based modalities have documented a history of causing adverse events in skin of color, such as an IPL, alexandrite, and diode lasers. Here are some adverse events in some patients of color that are as a result of the IPL use on the left side, alexandrite, and diode lasers when they were treating different modalities. So correcting an IPL burn with the light pod neo and chemical peels is a patient here in, in this slide, which is one of my patients who developed uh, first and second degree burns from the laser. And this is on the right, the final result after we treated her with laser again, which she was very apprehensive because she felt that that would damage her skin even further, but it's knowing how to use these devices and the fluences in the correct manner. So light and laser treatment for skin of color, the new standards for safety and success. So the 1064 or YAG laser is the gold standard for treating ethnic skin often referred to as the colorblind laser. You want to have sufficient power in a safe pulse duration, which equals to high power and efficacy with little to no side effects, a long wavelength, which can penetrate deeper into the dermis, and moderate but not too high melanin attraction, avoiding overheating of the epidermis, especially in skin of color. This wavelength um, diagram, a lot of people have seen this many times, and we want to show 
where the NDA 1064 kind of lies as far as its place on the wavelength scale. And you see that the NDA 1064 is uniquely versatile, absorbed by hemoglobin, melanin, and water. So treating skin of color, in addition to the safety of being a 1064 nanometer laser, the LightPod Neo has an added margin of safety compared to most NDA um, 1064 lasers without sacrificing power and efficacy. And this is the 650 microsecond pulse wave that this device has. And this is a patient of mine who um, I'm demonstrating on. There are two ways of delivering the same energy. The difference is that Aerolase, as you can see on the X and Y axis, the power and the pulse width, you see very high power and shorter pulse width, which is the 650 microseconds, versus other 1064 lasers. As you can see, it's lower power spread, but a longer pulse um, width, which is 3 to 30 milliseconds. So the difference between microseconds and milliseconds is significant when it comes to efficacy and safety in skin of color. So with the high power in a 650 microsecond pulse width, you can see that the heat it heats the target quicker, such as the follicle, because there is an indication for uh, hair removal. There's less time to heat the surrounding skin, therefore more efficient destruction of the target and avoids overheating of the epidermal melanin. So there's less pain or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation risk and therefore um, no need for numbing or cooling of the skin because it's essentially um, very little discomfort. So treating skin of color can be safe, easy, and effective with light pod Neo. No skin contact necessary, therefore your systems in that you use on the face or you use for the bikini area, you can rely on more of a sterile um, procedure. No topicals or contact cooling uh, needed as far as um, this system goes and the patients feel heat but very little pain. So this is the example of a patient being treated, if you can run the video. So as you can see, the device, the, the LightPod Neo is in the background, and you can see that my assistant is holding the handpiece about three to four inches above the skin, and you see it flash, and she's almost what we call painting over the skin for evening the complexion, stimulating collagen, and um, improving texture. So there are many uses for the light pod Neo with skin of color. Dyschromia, as we talked about, uneven complexion, and sometimes we also use it in melasma combined with the chemical peel. Um, skin rejuvenation and tightening, you do stimulate the top layer of the skin in order to have some contraction and tightening of the skin. We also use it in laser hair removal. Um, we also use it to control um, ingrown hairs, such as pseudofolliculitis barbae in men and women. It's also cleared for acne, spider veins, and uh, as we talked about, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, and then dermatosis papulosa nigra, or DPN. So with chemical peels and combining it, we want to use um, a peel that's suitable to use in conjunction with the light pot Neo. Looking at the peel, they're classified as superficial peels, very light or light. Sometimes they're referred to as glycolic washes when you refer to a very light peel. Then you have your medium depth peels and the deep chemical peels. So here are the classifications and when we see, and generally these types of peels require 
uh, a series of peels, and I find that using them in conjunction with the light pot neo, they can actually be applied right after the procedure, particularly when you're dealing with your pigmentary disorders, such as something that can have epidermal and dermal pigment, such as melasma. So skin biology of your alpha hydroxy acids. They generally increase natural exfoliation or desquamation process, and that's a top keratin layer. There's approximately um, 20 to 30 uh, keratin layers on the skin. So when you hear people say they turn over their skin in 30 days, and that is what we're referring to as the keratin layer which is the top of your epidermis. So what we're trying to do is induce this process to naturally kick in, possibly before it's time, and then you can also, with this, occasionally see a light peeling or dryness of the skin. The neopeel composition is a glycolic acid, and there are two that we use. Um, we usually use a 40 or 50 percent, but it does go as high as a 60 percent. And at, at uh, a pH of about two, and this has a proprietary Meloplex technology and where it helps to lighten the areas of skin. So this added, in addition to a mild exfoliation and disruption of the keratin layer, that we find that you can have when you do the light pod neo before the chemical peel actually enhances the chemical peel. So when we look at the different steps, you can see that glycolic acid, what it does is increases the desquamation and inhibits the melanosome transfer. So when we have a melanosome, Basically, it produces pigment and then transfer it into the other epidermal cells. So this actually, because it's exfoliating quickly, it actually comes off the skin before it's um, kind of loaded into the other skin cells. Uh, leucine helps with the um, melanin formation, so that's a necessary uh, uh, amino acid or protein that we, we see that it seems to um, help with in addition to the conversion of tyrosine into melanin. And glycolic acid we know has uh, the ability to, uh, to be a ty tyrosinase inhibitor. So also we talked about the mel melanosome transfer and we also want to reduce that as far as uh, treating something as stubborn as melasma. So the difference here are the chemicals. There's, there's no hydroquinone in this preparation, and we find that about 2 to 5 percent of the population can be sensitive to hydroquinone. So this is an excellent product that can be used um, in place of a hydroquinone preparation and be safe and effective as far as diminishing pigment. So here is an example of using the uh, Neo Peel after we have done the Light Pod Neo. And you'll see my assistant now give the chemical peel immediately after doing the laser treatment. So you can see the patient is just slightly pink all, um, almost as if she had worked out, and you see that there's even more than one pass going on here. And so one to two passes, patients tolerate it very well. You can see that she's not in any discomfort. And we're covering all the areas that we use the, the light pod neo laser uh, for, which was total full face. So treating skin of color, there are many uses for glycolic acid peels in skin of color. We use it for acne and melasma, other discolorations like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, freckles, and, and solar lint lintigos. Um, those are, are freckles 
that we can see that come about with sun. So we're not talking about the freckles that people are born with. Um, we see that kind of displayed in the sun exposed areas where we can see mild to moderate photo damage, textural rough changes of the skin, which sometimes can represent uh, actinic keratosis. So we need to make sure we examine our patients thoroughly before we do a lot of these procedures and that you're not treating over a skin cancer or pre-skin cancer. And we also find that it helps with very fine lines and wrinkles and textural changes. So the skin rejuvenation, we call it the one-two punch. And basically, that's the laser treatment that we use, the light pod neo, to promote collagen remodeling in the dermal layer, promoting a skin tightening and diminishing laxity, removal of pigmentary conditions at the dermal layer because of its penetration and the speed of the 650 uh, microseconds and the removal of vascular conditions and unwanted hair and treatment of acne for those who want uh, to use other methods and have been unresponsive to conventional therapy. Then we layer that procedure with a chemical peel to generate new epidermis and to move, remove superficial wrinkles as well, pigmentary concerns and other textural concerns at the epidermal layer. So all of this together, the one-two punch promotes complete skin rejuvenation, tightening and brightening by refreshing both the dermal and epidermal layers. So here are some examples of some patients, and this particular patient was the one in the video, and she came to our office with a lot of discoloration on her face. She had gone pretty much all around town to, to get some help with this, but um, the procedures and things that were being done was actually exacerbating her pigment. And therefore, you can see on the right side and where we did one treatment with the Aerolase uh, like pot Neo and the Neo Peel, the glycolic peel, and this was a 40 or 50 percent. Here's another patient that you can see who had some discoloration. We combine the light pod neo with a Jesner's peel in this case, and you can see a great result after four treatments. This one here is a patient more stubborn um, pigment in which we commonly see with melasma. She required six neo light, uh, light pod neo um, laser treatments plus salicylic acid peels um, alternating. We decided not to do these together, but on every other week. And as you can see, she has a, a significant amount of lightening in the inferior portion of the melasma on her left cheek. In fact, I just saw her today, and this is even much better. So she's been responding very well to this combination one-two punch. Here's another patient with uh, a darkening over the upper lip, which she had two treatments plus microdermal abrasion, and she's a work in progress. Another patient who had one treatment with the light pod neo and a 6% hydroquinone compound. And so you can see overall her complexion has lightened a little bit, which she was not really concerned about. She was more concerned about blending the hyperpigmentation or the melasma that was on her cheeks and on the upper lip, and you can see that we've accomplished that with one light pod neo and triple um, therapy of 6% hydroquinone. Another case of stubborn uh, melasma on the forehead, you see Aerolase treatment plus, in this case, we used a medium strength chemical peel, which was an 18% trichloroacetic acid peel. I would caution people to use the, the medium depth peels on skin of color if you have not had the proper training and know the signs and symptoms to look for when dealing with this type of peel, but I could have probably got the same results with a Jesner's peel, but more treatments compared to this one treatment um, that we did with the TCA. So it's better to go slow 
and um, deliberate than trying to do it very fast, regardless of how fast the patient needs this corrected. We can also see this in, in post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation in acne. So the side uh, benefits of the LightPod Neo Laser, it's unique wavelength, pulse duration, allowing side benefits including uh, reduction of ingrown hairs and pseudofolliculitis barbae, uh, the inflammation that goes along with it, hair reduction, acne, neocollagenesis for improvement of the tone, texture, and tightening of the skin, and removal of vascular conditions such as rosacea and spider veins. Here's some post-acne scars that another physician has contributed, Dr. Fran Cook-Bolden, in where there were seven treatments done and microdermabrasion. You can see that's a significant improvement on this patient. And here's a patient of mine who it was used for uh, laser hair removal um, procedure. And you can see she had a quite significant diminishing of the inflammatory component of this, which is the ingrown hairs, and she received two treatments. And we have another patient here who received five treatments. And as you can see, the target are the black hairs. And she also has some white hairs in the area. In the after photo, you can see that the hair um, that's white doesn't uh, go away or is not effective on white hair. We do know that you need pigment in order for the laser to identify the, the target. And therefore, um, it will leave white hairs behind. I always caution the patient about that so that they um, are aware that they may need electrolysis treatments after we uh, remove the dark hairs. Another patient of mine who received two light pod neo treatments for pseudofolliculitis barbae. And another patient here that received three treatments for hair removal and control of the pseudofolliculitis barbae and an axillary area, so it can be used all over the body. We have acne here and where it was treated, and as you can see, a, a significant improvement in the cystic and um, papular acne that we see on the left cheek of this individual. So in summary, the benefits of the LightPod Neo 1064 laser for skin of color is new levels of patient comfort, in best-in-class efficacy, uniquely versatile with the 650 microsecond technology and sanitary uh, treatment in that we don't have to place the um, hand device of this particular laser on the patient. Therefore, no skin contact or gels or creams or cooling devices that we need to use with this procedure. Additional benefits are that we can use it in both darker and lighter skin types um, for facial veins, rosacea, skin tightening, scar vision, nail fungus. There are no costly consumables. Um, there's low maintenance device platform, which eliminates water cooling and optimal fiber subsystems. And it's portable for multiple office use. I have two offices, and this is one of my workhorses because I can take it and trans from, transport it from one office that's 30 uh, miles away from the other office, and it has held up very nicely. Skin rejuvenation combination therapy for the winning one-two punch. Combining this system with chemical peel, it promotes complete skin rejuvenation tightening and brightening by refreshing both the dermis and the epidermal layers. Thank you, and if need be, I can answer some questions in my personal experience with the um, LightPod Neo in combination with the, the uh, Neo Peel, if anyone has 
Any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. So, so the question is, um, when I'm using the LipoPod Neo for pigmentary disorders, um, dyschromia, such as post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and melasma, what are my settings on, on the system? Well, first of all, um, what I like to do is do a test spot on my patient in the submental area to, to really kind of classify them and, and uh, classify their reaction to, to the uh, 1064 if they've never had it. Um, typically, in say a skin type five that I see, I will start low. It's better to start low and you can gradually inch up because again, these are gonna be series of treatments that you're going to do and you don't want to start out the gate with something very strong and then cause post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which doubles the, the problem or the issue at this time. So um, it can be anywhere from two to three at the six millimeter spot size, and that is something and, and where I tend to start with, a, say, like a skin type of five. But the, the um, lighter complexions, the patients who probably burn more than, than tan, you can generally increase that fluence more. So it seems like it's ironic and it would be the opposite, but no, you can increase the um, fluence in uh, lighter skin types versus decreasing it in darker skin types. The question is, how often do you space out the treatments for these patients? Um, like I was saying, that generally we, we want to do a series on these patients. I never try to tell them that we're going to accomplish what we need to accomplish, which is lightening these dark areas, um, you know, with one session. So that should be clear in the beginning with the patients. Now, granted, some patients will respond quicker than others. so. What the key is, though, is that these laser systems actually break the pigment up and you need to allow time for the body's macrophages to come and take the pigment away. And therefore, on the average, it's three to four weeks. That's what the process uh, takes, regardless of, of what your skin type is. So it's safe to say anywhere between three and four weeks is um, the, the best suitable time to uh, then repeat another treatment, whether it's, it's the one-two punch with the light pot neo and the chemical peel or just the uh, light pot neo by itself. It's still pretty much the same timing. Peels, on the other hand, by themselves can be done um, more frequently because you are not uh, blasting the the um, pigment in a sense like you are with the light pot neo, um, you're causing a def desquamation or a peeling effect with the chemical peel. And then, in terms of uh, managing patient expectations, how do, how do you do that with this combined treatment? Well, managing patients' expectations for one, um, say for instance with the melasma patients they're already um, exasperated um, with their condition and um, occasionally they go from doctor to doctor trying to cure it. One thing we do try to tell patients is that you never cure melasma. You can control it. So basically what's most important is that they know um, the routine of staying out of the sun, wearing um, sun protection, physical blocks like hats and, and umbrellas and, and protecting the skin against the sun. So it's a whole total lifestyle that they have to convert to, which you know some people may not be um, wanting to uh, participate in it. And therefore you can almost kind of predict how those patients are going to do. So, um, it's, it's something I leave on the patient to determine how well they want to control this condition by how compliant they are with my instructions. So that, that's where I start with it. And 
too, that people respond differently. And it may take one person three sessions to control it, and it may take another patient, um, uh, you know, six weeks to control it. So it varies from person to person, so you can't look at someone who may have referred you to my center and they had a great result in three weeks. Um, I, I normally don't tell the patients um, or give them, you want to give them averages. You don't tell them it's going to be exactly uh, better on this day or this month or what have you. So that's, that's what I try to make clear and I have my staff also try to um, have the patient understand that a lot has to do with the patient and how they respond, how compliant they are with their sunscreen and the treatments that we recommend. And in terms of uh, applying the chemical peel after the laser treatment, how long do you wait for that? The chemical peel that is used, that you saw in the video that's used after the light pod neo was done immediately after you kind of set that handpiece down. So there's no real time that you have to wait in between. Um, we usually have a tray set up with the peel products on it on one tray and the laser on the other tray. So once the laser is, is finished, um, there's no gels or, or preparations that we have to use on the skin. Um, so with the light pot neo, and therefore when we, after we lay the skin, we can go right to the chemical peel. Okay. And do you ever, you ever use injectables in combination? Yes, you can use injectable, um, your botulinum toxins or your fillers immediately right after that. Um, even if you, you know, the patient is still lying down, you can go ahead and do those additional treatments. So that's the order in which I would do them as well in, in doing the laser first and the chemical peel and then any injectables that you need to. So you need to start out with a perfectly clean face so that you can move from procedure to procedure. So that's very important. And do you ever combine any other lasers with, with this uh, procedure? Uh, do you have any other lasers that you typically use? Yes, I have a lot of resurfacing lasers and um, uh, Fraxel Dual. I have, um, uh, like I said, IPL. Uh, which I don't use in skin of color. We also have um, PDL and those other um, devices. I think we have all but, but a diode. So yes, you can um, combine those procedures, again, um, depending on the patient's skin type and the condition you're treating, they can all be done in one session. Treating with the Lipod Neo, is there anything to worry about with keloid scarring? Well, any device can potentially scar. So it's so important um, that people know um, the science of skin. They know how skin reacts. They pay attention to the skin reactions as you're doing the procedure. Um, you pay attention to the patient and what they feel. If a patient's telling you that really hurts, it really hurts. And so you need to stop, regroup, and um, possibly change settings. Um, and that happens a lot of times when we're trying to inch up the patient with the settings and the fluences from session to session. So the first rule of thumb is you have to pay attention to the patient. And then um, the, the higher the fluence, the more potential you can have um, scarring or burns. So that's why I am a stickler when it comes to uh, knowing your science, uh, have adequate training, don't just go to a weekend course, um, particularly if you're non-core physician and you have never, um, you know, picked up a laser in your hand. It's not a magic wand and it needs to be um, respected as far as when you're dealing with um, skin of color. Have you ever experienced any adverse reactions with the light by meal? Adverse reactions? Not in my hands. I haven't had any reactions. Um, 
but I've been doing lasers for, you know, 15, 18 years. Um, but, you know, some people are new to the game, and I think it's really important that they get the adequate training. Thank you.